the fifth annual and affair to remember. Learn more right after this. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome to Community Watch. Greg. Doug. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. I won't complain. Good. Good. Doesn't What's the matter? Well, it kind of goes along with our theme. Does you know, it? Yeah. We, you know, I think about blues music and ah. things of that nature. I mean, you know, just you make it work. Yeah. Just yeah. make it work. Yeah. Now, I know... Um, the topic today is something you have a, a, a real significant history with. And um, I would I say you were one of the founding members of, of the organization, is that right? Well, the connection started 10 years ago and uh, it actually came out of a conversation me and Ms. Samuel had. She had already been doing plays and stuff for years. And at that time, it was my first stint as the president of the 100, and I was just blown away because I had never been to any of her plays. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in Rome. And I was just amazed about the content and the strength of the, the plays she was, that I had seen that time. I think it was uh, something, it, it, something to do with mothers and their children. And I just remember talking to her about, you know, we need to have more of this, not just one time a year during the King Commission, but more of this. And so mm -hmm. out of that conversation, she says I pushed her into it, but out of that conversation, the you know, connection was formed, and uh, and this is part of the, and this is one of their events, the fifth mm -hmm. annual. So uh, I'm intimate related to it, put it that way. Well, we'll we'll see what Miss Samuel has to say about <laughs> it uh, in a minute when we come back. Um, we are talking about um, uh, an annual blues event fundraiser for an important organization. We want you to to find out all about it. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside the classroom. Where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits toward my bachelor's. My college is a state college within the university system of Georgia. My college is affordable. It's close to home. My college has online opportunities. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're thrilled to have with us back again Ms. Willie Mae Samuel. Welcome Thank back. Thank you so much for and, uh, having me back. And she's joined by Al Rowland, is that correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. First, uh, let's clarify. Let's clarify this, uh, yeah, let's this history this a little bit. Because um, I get the impression from you that you sort of feel like uh, Mr. Shropshire had kind of a um, you know, let's do this kind of added to the beginning and then kind of vanished. Yes, and I'm going to forgive him for that because I didn't <laughs> realize that he was going to start a new family. See, I thought all of oh, that was, was oh. behind and, and all of the little ones were had already grown up and he, you know, mm. had poured into them all he needed to pour. And so um, that was his reason for, for, for leaving mm. and uh, going to take care of them because he knows how I how I'm concerned about children and about them be being poured into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, I mean, just because <laughs> I because I know there is kind of a history of uh, of Mr. Shropshire 
getting people to do stuff because no. I, often I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, sucked into that You're as well. You're kidding. So uh, <laughs> maybe we should start a group of some kind, you know, some kind of support could, group. Let's come up with a name for it. <laughs> Well, in my fairness. Pulled out to be left out. <laughs> in our fairness, you know, you have some people that are great at getting you to where you need to be. And then there's others like me who are not good at that, you know, mm. that stretch, you know. So, uh, but I, I like to contribute where I can. So. Well, um, the organization, 10 years, I, uh, it's a little surprising to me, to be honest, because um, it, it seems like just a year or so ago that we were talking about it for mm -hmm. um so that's that's impressive not just that it's 10 years but i mean for any organization um to last uh, more than just a few years no matter you know what the the good intentions are mm -hmm. is is pretty impressive and it speaks uh, a great deal to your dedication and influence and let me add to you and to Greg and to all of the supporters here in, in the city. And most times I'm pulling from the same people over and over and that is what makes it so amazing that we lasted 10 years uh, because, you know, the same people over and over that you're pulling from, you're begging from and like uh, Al's going to ask you to buy a ticket today and I'm sure you buy one from him and Greg will do the same. So it um, it's, it's just wonderful that the community has helped us sustain it for that number of years. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that, and I never forget, you know, in the beginning, I would hear people say, well, you know, why Miss Sammy always got to deal with that, that black stuff, that black history stuff, the content of her, you know, it was always, some people saw it as something that's kind of dark, you know, and and I think if, if now more than ever, it should be clear why that is so important, that, you know, history, America is a country that loves history. It's just certain parts of history we don't care to talk about, but we love history. We love Fourth of July and all these holidays, and but it's certain aspects of history. And I think as as black people in the diaspora, we have to be conscious of telling our story and making sure we are telling our story and not allowing somebody else to tell it for us. And as a community, you know, it's sad sometimes that we don't realize the importance of that. So I personally thank you for being true to that because you understand the importance of us telling our own story because we are capable of doing that. And I think sometimes um, people don't like to deal with that aspect of it. You know, we can celebrate all the great things that have, that have happened, mm -hmm. but we can't forget to, to how we got to this point. Yeah. And when we lose sight of where we've come from, where we at is irrelevant because we can't even measure the growth if we don't know where we came from. So I thank you for being committed to this process because I know it can be very arduous. <laughs> it can be very difficult. And dealing with people and their attitudes can be, you know, it can be a lot. Right. It was interesting today when I looked at the newspaper, I was so pleased to see that um, Rome News was finally acknowledging that they were lynching, that they did some lynching in this area. Uh, and I thought, okay, at last. So we're, we're at a point where we just need to face facts uh, of how we got where we are so we can move into another um, dimension. So um, as I said, I'm pleased with you all, pleased with those who have supported um, the organization for these 10 years and don't know if we're gonna go 10 more, but we're gonna keep on putting our best foot forward. And I'm in agreement with you about telling your own story. I love the fact that John Lomax and, and, and his son, you know, did such great research, you know, went on the road and went into the Mississippi Delta and, and talked to the people. Uh, but you don't see a lot of us telling that story. John did it, he, he did well with it, but we've got to tell our story because there's something inside of us that has been affected or tapped and, um, and we only know, and we can only pull it out and push it out ourselves. So I just think we need to do it. And I appreciate those of, of another persuasion who do it and who try. Um, like Al says, sometimes I just want to get that spirit and, and, and just enjoy the blues and whatever. Um, and so there's, there's a part that, that others can't pull out that, that's in our history. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, uh, has the, has the, Name of the organization been officially 
shortened because I see everything that says the connection. Right, we're just trifling. No, oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not gone to the state to change, to change the name. We just okay. say, most people, if they're going to write a check, they'll do AACPA um, mm -hmm. connection. But when we refer to it, we just refer to it as the connection. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the event, um, which is now in its fifth year, uh, right. is, a, is a fundraiser for the organization. Actually, it is not. No. Actually, it is. When we started doing it, um, I had, like Greg, had pulled us into doing three plays a year. Okay. And I mean, we worked, we worked three plays a year. So this was supposed to be a, this has been a fun thing, a time for us to come together and just have fun um, doing it. Because actually, it only, and sometimes it doesn't do that, pay for itself. But I don't mind the going in the hole or whatever has to happen to make sure mm -hmm. that we um, have a time where we can celebrate each other. We can celebrate the aspect of our lives that right now I'm thinking is, is very important. Okay. And the, the concept of the event, mm -hmm. um, has, it, has it been blues from the beginning? No, at first it was just, just plain celebration. Okay. Um, and then of course the next year I thought, now what? What is it about us, about our lives, about black people that we can pull from the past and celebrate? Of course, the blues just just hit. That was it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought we'll do remembering the blues, and uh, so then it's that's why it's changed to to remember the blues. I'm not sure how long we'll stay with the blues. You all know that. I mean, we could stay with it forever, mm -hmm. you know, because there's so many aspects and you can go so far back. And, and of course, present day time, it is so different, so unique and different people now are celebrating uh, the blues. And so um, we could do it for quite a few uh, years still. But I'm not sure. I have one young man who said, oh, let's do, let's do something else. Let's do something else. But um, he hasn't persuaded me yet that, that, <laughs> that that's where we'll go. So uh, we'll just keep on remembering the blues. So, uh, Mr. Rowland, how did you get uh, cornered in, into this? Uh, well, uh, uh, it started, uh, I was on a radio show down in Cartersville with this lovely lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a little talking and uh, got to know each other. Needless to say, I fell in love with her. She's a wonderful, charming person. and. Mm -hmm. She's just that kind of person, just like, just like you said, just draws you right into the picture. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm in the band. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of happens. <laughs> it does. It does. But I, first of all, I want to say how, what an honor it is to be part of this organization, uh, this, this band, so many talented people in this band. I, I'm truly humbled just to be part of it. Now, uh, what? I'm, I'm assuming you have a, a longer history with the blues than than the band for for this event actually uh i'm i'm in this to uh define myself in the blues i'm uh -huh. i'm really a rock and roll animal rhythm and blues uh, uh -huh. acoustic kind of entertainer but uh i i've listened to the blues i, I know the blues but it's like i told william May, i, I want to feel it and as these musicians are so talented and i'm uh, a part of right now they're they're pulling me in just just right into the middle of it and I'm enjoying every minute every second I I love to practice you know I'm always there on time uh, ready ready to play but uh, like I said these guys are so talented they're they're taking good care of me uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it now I'm already you know I think as we was talking about earlier doc Miss Sammy you were saying we could stay with the blues for a while that the blues as an art form I still think is one that is underrated or is clearly not as popular as other uh, genres or the music forms and and I don't know why that is but I do I do know you have some resurgence you do have some modern forms of it now but as a but as a art form which is clearly something that we can claim mm -hmm. um, somehow it seems to be a disconnect you know it seems like I know we think about especially in modern day you know a lot of hip-hop and this whole movement which is great but before there was hip hop, there was blues, and right. even you will yeah. find elements of blues in hip hop, yeah. and some of the same yeah. themes and everything. But somehow, that's why I think this is so important because we can't allow this art form, you know, to be. <laughs> we can't allow it to be, you know, taken. 
right. from his right from his uh, from his history, and that's something our young generation have to learn about. You know, we have been contributing to the American fabric for a long time. Right. It ain't just with hip hop. We've been contributing in many ways for a long time, and the blues is one of those ways. Right, and you know, it's sad that it took younger yeah. Caucasians to accept it to love it, to fall in love with it, to want to play the guitar and, and, and do the B.B. King kind of thing. It took them doing that for blacks to realize that, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sure. that's sad that we have to have another group to validate <laughs> uh, what is always already perfect, already great. Okay. Well, we, uh, we're coming up on a break. Okay. As soon as we come back, we'll talk a lot more about Fair to Remember, so don't go away. text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been joined by Ms. Uh, Salita Burley and Ted Barnett. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Welcome. Thank Thanks. you. Um, all right, so uh, a fair to me, we haven't uh, talked to any of the specifics, and I'm, I know I want to get back to it to remind folks, but um, when, when and where is this event? This event is going to be at the Rome Civic Center March the 10th, 9, uh, 2017, it's going to be at 7 p.m. And couples are $50 and singles are $30. And couples mean that if you have a friend and you're on a budget, we even allow two women to come, two brothers to come or what have you, show the bromance or so what have you. Two people. Two people, <laughs> two a people. couple, a set. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the, uh, sep the 10th the of 10th March. Of March. Friday. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Friday. Okay. Well, yes. great. So we'll um, we'll remind folks again when we get closer to the end of the show. So y you have been involved with the connection for a few years. I have. I have. I kind of was sort of like I didn't cause it to happen. Yeah. I was kind of pulled in off one thing, mm -hmm. and then here I am, five, six years later. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. So. So you were pulled in and you never escaped? I never escaped. <laughs> I just kept getting pulled deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I had any fight to resist it. I just yeah. kind of, I saw it that it, it was so needed yeah. at this time. Well, honestly, let's, be, let's just be honest. I think Miss Samuel is one of those people that when she asks you, she's such a regal person, but also the level of dedication she has yes. that it's hard to look at her and say no yeah. when you know you're not doing half of what she has done. Exactly. So you kind of feel like, how can I tell her no? <laughs> and that's it. That's it. You say yes before you even know you realize. Yeah. Yes. But, but uh, obviously you've seen um, great value in it. I have. Uh, so it's, it's become important to you It, it well. really has. I have seen from children to adults, really get in the element of the knowledge and the wisdom of learning the, the arts, not just the singing, but the acting and the reciting, and just to see people come together and express mm -hmm. in ways you never thought. It's like, they're too quiet. I didn't know they had all that in them. <laughs> and you recognize gifts, and you were like, wow, oh, and yeah. talents. And now most of them that was around when I started, they're grown in college and on their way and I still yeah. see them in the element I know was in that person, yeah. that young lady, young man. Well, I, I wonder if being involved in, in some of the productions hasn't had a, uh, the effect of, of bringing out somebody to, to give them the confidence they needed to move forward in that way. And, and she does that. Yeah. She'll pull it out of you, pull it out of you. And she had this calm voice, but yet stern. Amen. And you start seeing things come out of growing people. You're like, wow. Well, and it's just like the learning and the experience. 
And they come back year after year, and you see them doing what she did to them, mm -hmm. pulling it out of other people. You know what's important about that, I think, too, especially since we have a lot of youth that no longer are involved in a lot of church activities. Because mm, yes. when I was young, the church was the platform that you experienced a lot of this, the music, yeah. the art, the recitals. Yeah, right. And you have a lot of youth that are not connected to a lot of churches nowadays. Exactly. But, but this is another platform. And I run into young people, as you say, who were in plays years ago. Uh, even that first one, Kings and Queens of the Niles, that we did. Yes. Um, and they still remember their line, or they still remember some of their lines or the character they played. And so years later, you talk to them and, and they still have that story. So it, it, it shows the importance yes. of allowing people to come into their own identity and helping them come into their own identity exactly. and how value, valuable that is. And so I think uh, this is such a needed, a needed place to express yourself mm -hmm. throughout exactly. the arts. And so I'm grateful that we still have people that are committed to the process because I think mm -hmm. it serves a greater good than we realize. Right. I think yes. a lot of people really enjoy that. They may struggle up to that point, but yes. when they do that performance or when that performance is held, I think it allows people sometimes to to acknowledge or to let people see a part of them that they may never be able to see any other time. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think right. that's exactly. powerful. Yeah. That's right. It's so powerful. Right. That you see the part where they're singing in the car, but we don't see it. Yeah. Or they're singing in the house when nobody's there, doing the acting. Mm -hmm. Now it's out on the platform. You're like, wow, I didn't know they yeah. had that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Barnett, tell, tell me uh, a little bit about your, uh, I, I know you are. Um, legendary singer. Legendary. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But I want to hear a little about the the history of the legend. How, how long have you been um, in the business, I guess is the way to say it. Well, I started out, uh, I'm the youngest of 11 kids, eight boys and three girls, and I was the baby boy. But they had a little group there at our church called the New Hope Four. And I was around seven years old when they asked me to to lead some songs with them, and so I, naturally I was on it, you know, to, with Big Brothers and Tony, Mr. Tony Bray, and get out there at the church and lead songs at seven years old. And uh, so it, one thing led to another, and yeah. I'd been doing that and reciting stuff because I went to the, the Fairview uh, School then, case frankly, oh. trying to, that was my school. And then, you know, it was a, a segregated school, but yet, you know, I was in the recitals, the uh, get up there and talk about four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth on this continent, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we engage in a great civil war. We come testing whether that nation and nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. And reciting that stuff, yet I'm still, you know, at a different school than a lot of people that I grew up in Case Spring with. But I, I realized that giving my best you know, was just what I had to do because that's what those teachers and things instilled in me. Mm -hmm. Not only just them at the church, like he was talking about, they had recitals, they had rehearsals, they had singing, and I've always been involved. And probably one of the biggest events that I'd ever done, I was asked one time to uh, do uh, HR to keep our hair, an old way that our black churches sung it. And up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, at a Masonic convention, right in front of her, right at 400 people. Mm. And no problem, I just picked me a spot and just really let it roll. And that's what I've always done. <laughs> let it roll. Well, um, how long have you, have, have you played Every year that they've had this event, or, or I think it's been pretty well every year. Yeah, pretty yeah. well every year. Yeah. Just like they said uh, that Samuel lady, she was <laughs> 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 she invited me out, and I'm still going out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think I, I, I appreciate her. I appreciate her patience, and uh, it, it's it's helped me to to appreciate where I come from. Mm -hmm. It's just like. Greg said that if you if you don't ever look back at your history or remember your history or let folks know that you're proud of where you come from, mm -hmm. you know that cotton field was rough, but mm -hmm. the cotton field enabled me to get out and work and knew what good hard work was all about. Mm 
-hmm. You know, there wasn't no TV remote control. There wasn't even it had phones early, but they were party lined. Everybody listening. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, just learn how to live and how to give respect. That was one of the things that that uh, the old time, the way I come from, mm -hmm. that because uh, there were a lot of people that grew up in my community that I didn't even know their first name until they, I went to the funeral. Yeah. You know, it always Mr. and Mrs. So and so, and it didn't. It wasn't just black. It's black, white, blue, green, Mexican, whatever. Yeah. You address them as Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. You know, I'm thinking when you were speaking, Ms. Burnett, I was just thinking. This is history because it, at these events you have multiple generations. That's true. And I was just thinking there's probably not a lot of opportunities where you have a diverse you know, number of generations in the same room participating in the same event That's outside true. of, whereas as a grandparent you may go to your child's baseball game, but this is an event where different generations can interact and it may not be related. That's right. And, and exchange mm -hmm. in thoughts and exchange in and just being in that presence, because right. I know when I was growing up, I don't, we just learned, you know, when right. you were in a room full of grown folks, you just shut up. That's you ain't got true. no business talking. That, that's just, true, that's just, true. That's just be quiet right. and listen. That's right. That's and I just right. think having an opportunity where young people can be exposed to some of that wisdom and, and, that, and that life experience that you have, mm -hmm. that I think that's one of the things that we miss out on, because when you were just talking about the cotton field, see, I, I know what that is. I uh -huh. grew up in the South, so I know what cotton looked like, but I've never picked cotton. Uh -huh. Well, I have some in, my, in a glass that I picked for myself, but I'm saying, but I think it's so, we're so close, but so disconnected. Yeah, right. And the blues in this event is just exactly. such a way to connect all of us because while we're so close and we have technology that will allow us to be in constant contact, we're probably more disconnected now than, yeah. than ever. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's true, Greg, we had my little grandson that stayed out every weekend on Friday evening. He moved out of his house with his mama and spent the weekend with Nana and Papa. And he, he's been at every one of these events because he enjoyed his old Papa singing the blues. And I've been able to, you know, not only do things like that, but to uh, sing stuff that we learned in school. You know, I had a... Uh, Sung out to the kids for this family thing. Uh, Mary had a little lamb, and the uh, kid got to looking at me, and then a lady heard me sing that. She said, I've got some other verses that go with that song. And she said, I want you to put it together and, and sing it back to me. And she did, and, and I've been asked to sing it. She said, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece were white as snow, and everywhere. That this Mary went, that the lamb, surely he would go. Said he followed her to school one day, the saw against the roof. He had all the little children, how they laughed and played. See that the lamb at school, then she said. Oh, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta take a break, but that's, okay. that's spectacular. Stay with us, we got more right after this. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside of the classroom where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits to a bachelor's. My college is a state college within the university system of Georgia. My college offers courses that fit my schedule. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are. We are GHC, mm -hmm. Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been talking about the annual blues concert, a fair to remember that is coming up at the Rome Civic Center on March 10th, which is a Friday at 7 o'clock. Uh, singles can get in uh, $30, couples for $50. And uh, this will be your opportunity to hear more from uh, Mr. Barnett and uh, Mr. Rowland and their Love spectacular God. blues band. You, um, you got to be there, uh, March Amen. 10th. And a great cause, great evening. Amen. Don't miss it. Amen. Uh, thanks for being with us. And we'll see you next time on Community Watch.